Okay, so let me put my own time here. Is there a, a pointer? So, okay. So, okay, uh, well, my name is Arturo Nunez Castineira, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, cosmic uh, diffusion uh, that we've been hearing quite a lot uh, today, but in, in simulations of, a, of an isolated galaxy uh, with uh, full MHD. This is a work that I've been doing uh, as a postdoc in COA with a team of uh, both observers and, and simulators. Now, what are we doing? As I said, what we're doing is a simulation of a, of a isolated galaxy with the code uh, uh, RAMSES, which is an AMR code where we're solving MHD equations coupled with gravity, some uh, subgrid physics to take care of the stars. So basically there are some stars particles that are born when the gas collapse. Uh, once you have some gas conditions that bake the stars, the stars have the life and they become supernova, which is where we're going to inject this last uh, ingredient, which is the cosmic ray fluid. Why are we doing this? Basically, if you, if you look at the galaxy, uh, as a, if you simplify what a galaxy is, it's just a system, a very complex system where gravity, gravitational collapse is competing with local pressures. And uh, what the observation seems to point out, particularly local observations, is that the typical pressures uh, have more or less equipartition uh, between thermal, magnetic, turbulent pressure, and cosmic rays. So it's probably a very important ingredient for the evolution of the galaxy to include the uh, cosmic rays. So this is what we're doing. Now, what are we doing? We're basically simulating a dwarf galaxy with a total mass of 10 to the 11, uh, up with a very high resolution of nine parsec resolution, which is still, I mean, it's high resolution for simulations, but for modeling the evolution of particles, uh, as cosmic rays, it's, it's, it's very coarse resolution. We're, we're also resolving the, the ISM. I'm going to tell you a bit more about that. And uh, we take the cosmic ray as a fluid of uh, cosmic rays that correspond to the low energy range. So this is GEB range. The idea is that we are going to propagate it following two, two versions of a diffusion, diffusive cosmic rays, once in which uh, one in which this, the cosmic rays are basically diffusing in an isotropic way, and another one in which uh, they are anisotropic, meaning that they follow a uh, little bit the, the magnetic field lines. The, um, the values that we take for the, for the diffusion coefficient are spanning between 10 to the 27 and 10 to the 29, so we can bracket values that are uh, predicted for the, for the Milky Way, and also we can compare with other simulations. So basically, also, the, the energy that is injected is 10% of the supernova. So one of the things that is very new for our simulations, and it, it, it could be very important, is that the gas evolution of the, of, uh, of the simulation is typically let's, uh, simplified in, in other simulations by imposing uh, this pressure floor in which basically you put a frontier below which the gas cannot go, a frontier in pressure. And the result of this is basically that you're not creating this phase here, which is the, the cold neutral phase, what I'm showing you here is the pressure and, uh, and density. So this is a 2D histogram of, of, of the galactic gas. And by doing this pressure flow, you're basically erasing this, the cold neutral medium, which is the, the, the medium where the stars are born. So you're making simulations forming stars in, in, in odd places. So what we did was to update the, 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 the gas physics of the simulations and get away from, I mean, take away this pressure floor, so we can actually populate the gas in a more consistent way. This uh, method is basically validated with higher resolution simulations. Now, one of the nicest results of this is that we managed to, re to, to recover uh, mass fractions for the different phases that are more or less in agreement with what is observed in the Milky Way. So these points here are observations in the Milky Way with very big error bars because these are quite complicated observations. So for now, we're, we're very well in the park, but we're not able to disentangle yet between the different uh, coefficients, at least not with this, uh, this uh, observable. So what's the result? These are the six galaxies with simulation. This is the, the density of the gas. So what you see on the top are the three anisotropic uh, diffusion simulations and the three isotropic in the bottom. And uh, the kappa parameter is basically uh, growing as you go to the right, okay? So this is 10 to the 29. As you can see, the, I mean, if you look an overall, uh, a very quick look, this, this is not a good way of disentangle. The, the gas is more or less the same. There are some small differences, but uh, 
it's not uh, very efficient. You can also look at the, at the cosmic ray distribution, just as an example. As you can see, when you do an isotropic diffusion, your cosmic ray uh, structure is following a little bit the, the galactic arms. So you, you see more or less the structures. And as you, you put a higher kappa, so higher diffusivity, more efficiently escaping cosmic rays, these, these structures are washed out. You can also look at the isotropic diffusion in which you get this, this, uh, these little blobs. And, um, and well, but this is, this is uh, the situation now. Okay, so one interesting result is basically, as I said, uh, there, there is expected to have, we're expecting to have in a galaxy some sort of a partition and the same amount of, of, of pressure. So here for, for different pressure components of the galaxy. So here I'm showing you the radial profile. So this is the radius of our galaxy of different pressures, uh, magnetic, thermal, uh, cosmic rays, and uh, kinetic or turbulent. And we see they are more or less in the same uh, order of magnitude, except for these two cases, where very interestingly, the magnetic pressure, it's, uh, it's quite low. It's almost a, a, an order of magnitude low, particularly in the center. This is uh, due to some sort of a plateau or, or a stop in the magnetic amplification of the galaxy. What, what happens here is basically that this, this uh, stop of the magnetic amplification basically boosts uh, the star formation. So here you have the star formation and the time of evolution of the different galaxies. And the two galaxies with a higher star formation rate are exactly the two galaxies that, as here, here are the maps of the, of the magnetic field, are the two galaxies that at some point stop amplificating the, the, the magnetic field. And, and basically this took away a, 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 an extra pressure. The magnetic pressure is no longer there. In the other cases where the, where the magnetic pressure is there, so notably all the anisotropic cases, the, 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 the star formation is it's very well suppressed, which is, which is very, very much in, interesting to, to control a little bit the, the, the magnetic, I mean, the, the stellar component of the galaxy. Now, what this is uh, evidencing, what this is showing is that there is some sort of dual effect of the cosmic rays on the on the fact that we have cosmic rays that, that diffuse differently on the star formation uh, rate of the galaxy not only by the fact that in these cases when you have higher diffusion you're going to have less cosmic rays because they're escaping but also you're going to have less magnetic magnetic field uh, pressure which will make a double effect on the on the on the star formation effect on the on the star formation rate of the galaxy sorry now another interesting way of uh, of basically looking of, uh, of your simulations and comparing it with uh, with observations is to look at the at the gamma luminosity with respect to the star formation rate for which we have uh, some observation here i'm showing it divided by the star formation rate so here we have a lot of observations of galaxies that are more or less well behaved there are two or, or three galaxies that are point that, that you could place more or less here but they are thought to have an AGN, so we, we, we take them out because this, uh, the pressure of uh, the presence of an AGN is, of course, going to, to drive the, the gamma luminosity up. And if we put our, our, our galaxies here, what we see is that values that have a, a, a diffusion parameter close to that of what is inferred for the, for the Milky Way are falling more or less in, into the ballpark particularly for an isotropic uh, diffusion. In the case of uh, isotropic diffusion, what we get is the basically very, very slow isotropic diffusion. It's consistent with observations, while fast and isotropic, dif fast isotropic diffusion tends to get really, really far away from observation. So we are able to say that very fast isotropic diffusion are not really consistent with observation. Now, there is a problem with this. And the problem with this is that other simulations tend to say the opposite. Typical simulations like those of uh, Chan et al. in 2019 and, uh, or, and Maria Berham, it, they, temp, they tend to say that slowly diffusing uh, cosmic ray in simulations yield a gamma luminosity that is quite above uh, what is observed. And then once you do fastly diffusion, diffusing uh, cosmic rays in, in simulations, you are making galaxies that have a gamma luminosity that tends to agree with the, with what is observed, which is not what we, what we say. At least in our simulations, uh, we, we recover agreement with observations in both, in both ranges, no? by, by using uh, diffusion parameters that are 
in agreement with what is predicted and by comparing with other simulation, with other observations. Now, uh, sorry. Now, uh, of course, this has to be looked in, in more in detail because, uh, yeah, this is the last one. This has to be looked more in detail, mainly because the gas physics on the simulations tends to be overlooked and, and overly simplified, which is something we, we didn't do in this case. So might be a point, but nevertheless, simulations exactly similar like ours, but with, uh, let's say, the wrong gas physics, which are these points here with the crosses, uh, tend, to, tend to give a, a also, um, let's say, a compatible, uh, a compatible uh, prediction for the gamma luminosity. So the, the picture might be more complex than we think, but nevertheless, I mean, uh, what we see is that uh, probably the kappa, the, the, the diffusion parameter should be around 10 to the 28 uh, as typically predicted. So just to conclude, um, just to conclude, uh, the, the diffusion, different diffusion uh, uh, scenarios modifies very weakly, as I said, the gas uh, fraction of the different uh, ISM phases and also the, the main uh, distribution of the, of the gas in the, in the galaxy. But uh, we see that the different models have a dual effect uh, on the star formation effect, particularly by modifying the magnetic distribution of the galaxy. So, so either this is happening at large scale, uh, affecting the, the large dynamo, or at smaller scales, but there is an effect on the magnetic field that needs to be studied and understood. And uh, finally, observations uh, observations of, of, of gamma ray luminosity of local galaxies seems to point that our simulations with fastly, particularly isotropically diffusing cosmic rays are not very consistent with what is observed. So we're planning on extending this study basically by doing a very detailed small scale studies on our simulations and extending the set of simulations by adding a, a diffusion parameter that is not global but the, there's my time, but it will rather it will rather depend on the ISM properties, which is probably more 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 realistic to what's probably happening in the galaxy. So thank you, and if you have any questions.